not paying for it, then whatever position you've been in for two to three years and you've been cleared on a top secret clearance, you will quit as an operative and Northrop Grumman or SAIC or the Bellway Bandits will hire you and sell you back to our government at three times the price that we paid for you as a government organization. So you're getting the idea that corruption is really rampant here, including in our intelligence, in our banking system, in our health system, now in our national security agency. The gentleman who ran it before ran a budget of a half a billion on one program that was not successful. It may or may not have been called the Einstein program. The boys who are monitoring me now know that they blew a half a billion dollars on what we call signal intelligence and electronic intelligence and other intrusive methods by which they want to pick up intelligence. And instead of really working on what we call human, developing human assets, that is spending the time and energy to create loyal Americans who are willing to go overseas and go into various countries, be it Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and work the assets that we need, we have developed a system within the National Security Agency plus 12 other agencies, the NRO, the NGA, and many other organizations that really do not add to our national security, but are monitoring what are Americans about to do against their own government. So our government has become its very own enemy. Is it particular to the Republicans? No. Is it particular to the Democrats? No. You have a president like Clinton who came in without any money and left with $150 million. Now, how did he do that? He did that by writing a book that was so full of factual inaccuracies and basically was paid off. And his wife, who comes with this disingenuous attitude, as if we, oh, yes, in Pakistan there were the terrorists of al-Qaeda. Absolute nonsense. Hillary Clinton has done nothing, nothing but promote her own career. And she's marginalized now. She's not even liked by her own people in the Democratic Party. That's why they put her in a Secretary of State. There's very little she can do except travel around like Condoleezza Rice, another ineffectual person who came out of Stanford, and I knew her in the Bush administration, not the brightest whip and not the most effective, but had no problems joining the Boys Club to create all kinds of national security initiatives which were detrimental to America, the attack in Iraq and the imminent attack that they wanted in Syria. Iraq is a disaster, and instead of our generals getting forth and what we call dereliction of duty, they committed a dereliction of duty. They refused to tell the civilian commanders, you were wrong. I must say there is a very good commander who I do respect, and that's Gates. Gates is a decent, honorable man who was DCI, that's director of the CIA, came out of Bush senior administration. So I don't take a broad brush and eliminate everybody. Since Bush Sr. was President of the United States, it has been a disaster downhill for us, not because it's Republican or Democrat, because we have not had presidents who are willing to serve the country, willing to be honest, willing to admit their mistakes, and willing to be competent, and even in their own competency, willing to make mistakes and say I'm wrong. Obama has said nothing but promises and falsehoods, and basically has accrued power and allowed a ballet dancer. That's Rami Emanuel. I have nothing against ballet dancers as long as they remain on the stage. But I do not want them in national security. I do not want them appointing my ambassadors to China, who happens to be a Republican from the state of Utah. I do not want selling my ambassadorships in Japan to the highest bidder, what's called a bundler from San Francisco, who has no idea of what Japan is about, and commercializing our national security because Obama has no idea of what he's doing. So we have come to a point, again, Steve and I have said this repeatedly, where the American public is literally aghast, feels impotent, feels totally disillusioned, and their own response is, well, what are we going to do about it? There's nothing we can do, so we might as well enjoy and, and have carpe diem. Well, Mr. and Mrs. America, I'm saying to you, once again, I come on the air, I will commit treason, that is no question now, there are grounds for me to say this is civil disobedience. So the protest that you had on the Tea Party was not very effective. Why? Because the Tea Party is underwritten by guys like Norquist and Glenn Beck, who are not really in the forefront of what I would call honorable Americans. What you need are people who really have served our country willingly and have willingly risked their lives to say this is enough. We've had enough of corruption. We've had enough of cronyism. This is not capitalism, I see. I have my own company. It's called NBI Health. I produce a product. 
I'll be a little commercial about it. It's called OsteoK for fractures and prevention of fractures. There's nobody giving me money. There's no bankers there. I don't want a banker there. I don't want investors. I put up my own money to produce my own products to sell them on the market, just like a thousand entrepreneurs in this country. There's nothing special about me because as an entrepreneur, I want to sell that product to OsteoK for fractures. But I go on the air because I'm pissed. I'm angry. Because a guy like Steve Quayle, who's put years of energy and effort onto explaining to you, look, we're going to have an economic crisis. Maybe he makes an impact, maybe he doesn't. But he certainly gets my interest in and saying, you know what, Steve, let me be have the honor to be stand alongside of you. And let me try again to commit treason against tyranny and incompetency and arrogance. Because to me, if that's tyranny and treason, then I am a patriot. Treason in the face of incompetence and arrogance and cronyism and corruption is patriotism to me. We have to stop this, America. And if you do not get up and protest, if you do not stand up for what your rights are, we are lost. Why? Because China is watching us. And China brought Greitner over and gave him a warning. Our Secretary of Treasury said, you better get your act together. And you better make sure that our interest, the T-bills, the surplus that they have, which is in the billions of dollars that they received as a result of getting very cheap labor, very cheap products, which they addicted us to, either through Walmart or a thousand other stores, Target. They made sure that we, the American people, were addicted to cheap labor, cheap products, so that they could get profits. And they specifically are using this in a new warfare, which I have explained to our generals, they refuse to hear, it's called economic warfare. And, and they don't understand it. Metal. They don't get it, do they, Steve? They do not understand. Well, the, it's the very con- hard, Steve. You and I understand what it means to have a dollar bill. As you've said so eloquently over the years, look, that dollar bill has nothing behind it except in God we trust. Is that right, Steve? Well, I've said that, but I said and now they don't even want to acknowledge him, so let's just say this. In, in the printing press they trust. Correct. So Steve is saying it in, in his usual bright and intelligent way, but he's saying it very clearly to all of you. We don't have any dollars. We don't have anything to back it. And the Chinese are saying, you know what, get your act together, otherwise we're going to get a, a another currency to back up your American currency because you owe us billions of dollars. And by the way, we're going to buy up your mining. And by the way, we're going to buy up your oil. That movement, the attack into Iraq, was not about our need for cheaper oil. We don't get oil from the Middle East and the United States. Our primary oil, 16% of it has gotten from the man who insulted Bush the most, and that was Chavez from Venezuela. Check the records. You boys at the NSC, check the records, and you'll see what it is. And the NSA, we get our oil from Mexico, Nigeria, and Chavez, and internally, domestically. So who gets our oil when you got that great... Conglomerate, which is another cronyism of corruption, ExxonMobil, Shell, Anglo-American Corporation of Faisal, where they tell you we need billions of dollars to basically buy up the rights for oil. It's nonsense. They need it for profits. Mobil was so ashamed of their profits at a time when America was losing money that they made $49 billion. They had to apologize on ads in the newspaper. So what I'm saying to you now, listen, Mr. and Mrs. America, The system is breaking down. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. And in that republic where we have representation, the representatives have forgotten you and me. And what they have remembered is to line their own pockets, to do whatever they want to do, to say whatever they want to say, and to basically concentrate their power so that it becomes absolute. To do that, they need to hire mercenaries like Blackwater, They need to hire private security firms so they don't have to pay policemen who are honorable state policemen or local police guys who are trained and they have to pay them eighty or a hundred thousand or whatever they deserve, but instead they'll give it to a private security firm which can subcontract it out to people who barely speak English or barely trained, barely will fight for a civil society. And basically they will create absolute power so that in case there is dissension created either by your own discontent, created by the fact that you're sick and tired of this corruption, sick and tired of the absolute cronyism that exists, they will make sure that they have the proper number of soldiers and 
private security guards or Blackwater to make sure that whatever eruption occurs, be it spontaneously or contrived, 